Good evening, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Rina for giving me this opportunity to talk about management of posterior polar cataract. So, posterior polar cataract is a congenital cataract which has increased incidence of posterior capsular rent. In a normal cataract, this incidence is less than 1%. In case of PPC, this incidence is increased to 6 to 36 percent. Why? Because, the, because of the adherence of the cellular opacity to the capsule as well as because of the extreme thinning and fragility of the posterior capsule. This condition is uh, fairly common, seen in 3 to 5 in every 1,000 individuals and it's mostly bilateral. Uh, around an 80% of cases, it's bilateral, and there's a positive family history in half of the patients. So we can see here that as the technology and the techniques have advanced, the incidence of PCR, posterior capsular rent, in PPC has decreased. And we did a study at Shankanetralia where we studied the incidence of PCR in uh, over two eras, from 2006 to 10, one group, and 16 to 20. And we also noticed that the incidence of PCR indeed has come down because of the advancements in the technology and development of newer techniques. Now, uh, among the technologies, I think the anterior segment OCT has played an important role. You can literally look at the posterior capsular integrity. So uh, this paper by Chan et al. says that uh, the posterior, they have studied the uh, PPC in 37 eyes and they've graded the PPC on ASOCT, anterior segment OCT, and the grade 3 is absence of intact PC. So you can literally see that the PC is not there and prepare yourself for those cases. Uh, another very interesting study from PGI, they studied around 58 eyes of PPC, out of which nine eyes had a rent, PCR. And uh, what they noticed is that, that in eyes with PPC larger than four millimeter in size, the incidence of PCR was 30%. And eyes with PPC less than four millimeter in size, the incidence of PCR was 5%. 5.7 percent. I think that this is an important uh, uh, clue, you know, to predict if you don't have uh, ASOCT. Now we look at uh, some of the videos and we look at the steps, you know, uh, of uh, 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 surgery, phacoemulsification, and PPC. So you need an adequate size of capsular rexes. The rexes should neither be too large so that you are not able to put a, uh, do an optic capture in case you have a rent, nor should it be very small. If it is very small, you won't be able to take out the pieces of the uh, divided nucleus. Hydral dissection is contraindicated in these cases and uh, Hydrodelineation can be done. In this video, I have neither done the hydrodissection nor done the hydrodelineation, have started directly with trenching. So you can trench, though this is a fast forward video, but you're supposed to do a slow motion uh, FACO where you use low FACO, low flow rate, and low vacuum. And after that, the division is done without rotating the nucleus or the epinucleus. And here, even the pieces are brought out without rotating. You have to rotate the tip in such a way that you can bring the pieces out in case you're planning to divide the nucleus and take it out. Similarly, uh, the other side can be, uh, the other side nucleus can be uh, removed the same way. Now, what is important here is that the anterior chamber stability should be maintained at all cost. So when you're removing the instrument, inject viscoelastic so that the posterior capsule neither moves anteriorly nor posteriorly. So when I remove my instruments, the anterior chamber is formed. This is a very important step. Now I'm left with a bit of epinucleus and a lot of cortex. So this step, these steps are the most important steps. So the cortical cleanup, as said, 
in the previous talk also should be done from the uh, fornices from the capsular fornices and you leave the center attached here bring out clear the fornices first and leave the central cortex attached that should be because as we have seen previously it is very adherent to the posterior capsule the cortex there so uh, it can if you try to peel it in the beginning till you feel the things are under control don't remove the central cortex so another thing that you'll notice here is that uh, the i'm removing i'm using a bimanual uh, irrigation aspiration so i haven't switched hands usually to clear the other side uh, volume kame pane other side uh, cortex you will switch hands in doing so again you are going to destabilize the anterior chamber so if you have the expertise do it off in one go alternatively you can use a coaxial irrigation aspiration where you don't have to repeatedly come in and out of the anterior chamber posterior capsular poly pc polishing should not be done because the pc is very thin in these cases and hence uh, what i've done here is i've cleared it with the posterior part of the cannula that is the aspiration cannula again the anterior chamber is formed with the viscoelastic and the lens ideally you can have a rent at any stage of ppc surgery we can't be complacent that you know the uh, uh, lens material is out you can have i've had rents while putting the lens so ideally a lens that uh, in which you require least manipulation a single piece uh, foldable lens is usually easily uh, put in the bag and that's what uh, i feel should be the choice of iol in these cases so this we have seen that when you are able to divide the nucleus at times now let's look at another case when we are not able to divide the nucleus sometimes you know the nucleus is especially when you try to do it in early cases it's like a jelly kind of a thing which doesn't really separate if we, i've got a crack but it's not separated it's not coming out out as a single piece so i know that i'm not going to be able to lift up this half of the nucleus so i'm going to change the strategy and how did i change the strategy i just started chipping now instead of playing in the vertical plane i i am re removing the horizontal that is the inferior half of the nucleus and i am creating space so chip off what whatever uh, uh, safely whatever bits of nucleus you can and then you have lot of space after that the most important step that is the visco dissection so inject visco elastic underneath the capsular margin and lift up this it's very easy believe you me to once the inferior nucleus is out it's very easy you just inject visco elastic underneath the superior capsule and the superior uh, half of the nucleus will come up and thereafter uh, it's the same thing that you start uh, cleaning the periphery first and then uh, in the last you uh, clear the center part so when we analyzed uh, our results of uh, incidence of pcr in ppc in different stages of uh, uh, cataract surgery uh, we found that cortical wash uh, we is the, this in this step it's the highest incidence around 60% of rents we noticed occur during cortical wash so as i said previously this is a step where you need to tread uh, really uh, carefully so followed by so it can pcr can occur at any stage um, commonest is cortical wash followed by nuclear uh, nuclear em emulsification usually it is thought you know that new chances of nucleus drop and all are high but it's usually the rent occurs after the nucleus is out this is what our study results showed so uh, in conclusion uh, we require an adequate size ccc minimal hydro dissection and hydro procedures if at all can be avoided should be avoided and should try to maintain a stable anterior chamber and uh, should do a slow motion phaco that is use all the parameters keep them a little low and uh, anybody trying to do a uh, phaco emulsification in ppc should learn visco dissection should be adept at visco dissection it will help you in moving out the nucleus help in epinucleus as well as in cortex thank you
Very nice presentation, Dr. Shikha. Any pearls, that, any tips you like to give for your uh, visco dissection? Like how much are you using and uh, do you do a multi-quadrant uh, thing yes. or just one end only you lift it up? Yeah, so it's, uh, you can do it. Usually you need, uh, before you do that, you need a little bit of space. Mm. That is what is important. So you should have, as I said, for the nucleus, basically, the whole of nucleus will not come out unless it's really soft, you know, and you're doing kind of hydro de uh, viscodelineation kind of thing in softer nucleus. But if it's a little formed nucleus, then you need to clear out a bit of area and inject visco. Just it's it's just like doing a hydro. You just you're just using a, a cannula and uh, removing. So now what I'm trying to say is that uh, you don't want too much of visco also to go like as a gushing inside also because it'd be the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like we are avoiding uh, hydro dissection. We're doing more of a delineation. So yeah. if we could just put the visco like just to lift up the edge. Yeah. Wouldn't that so, be enough? So, so I, I don't think so. It goes the same way. Mm. The visco doesn't behave like the uh, hydro. Mm. It does not. It's a little more viscous. So I've not faced that problem. I don't know if somebody else injects too forcefully, but uh, that has not been. The, that's not my concern. Okay. Thank you so much.